All right, so for this warm up, uh, we've got to graph it and then asymptote and end behavior it. Okay, so let's start with. Step zero, we don't have yet. So step one is domain and vertical asymptotes. Set the denominator equal to zero. Solve it. Done. Domain is all real numbers, but x cannot be zero. Vertical asymptote is x equals zero. Goes on our graph as a dashed line vertically right there. Step two says horizontal asymptote. Degree of the top is, degree of the top is one, degree of the bottom is one. Those are the same in my book. I don't know about your book, but one is the same. Okay. Which means then we look at leaf coefficients, leaf coefficient on top, two leaf coefficient on the bottom, one, two divided by one is two, so that becomes y equals two. Again, that is a horizontal line, dashed, going all the way across. Good so far. Yeah. Y intercept is there a Y intercept? Is there a Y intercept? No. How come? Because if so, we got two two reasons why. One. If I plug in zero, I get negative one divided by zero, right? Can't happen, okay? Another one is because the vertical asymptote is at x equals zero, means that my function can exist at x equals zero. So there is no y-intercept on this one. Except that x equals zero is just automatically assume you're not going to have one. Not assume. Automatically, you're not going to have one. You just know. Yep. No. No, because we can cross over a horizontal asymptote. Uh oh, it's still. Okay. That's not my problem. can't live with that. It's messy. X intercepts. Set the numerator equal to zero. Solve it. So I get one half comma zero for my x intercept, which would be right there. Don't have a step five yet. Don't have a step six yet. Step seven says find some more points. So let's go left zone. Uh, we'll go negative one, negative two, and negative ten. I like to have three in my zones. If I plug in negative one, two times negative one is negative two, minus one is negative three, all over negative one. Negative three divided by negative one is positive three. Negative two times two is negative four. Minus one is negative five. All that is over negative two. That becomes five halves, which is 2.5. Negative 10 would be negative 21 all over negative 10, which is positive 2.1. So we're there, which means my function comes in through here and then makes an uptick and goes off to the south. 
right zone now. Let's try positive 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, divided by 1 is 1. And then 10. 2 times 10 is 20, minus 1 is 19, all over 10 is 1.9. On the horizontal asymptote and then head down to the There is the first half of the problem that was given to us. Find the graph. Questions on said graph. Okay. I'm going to scroll down a little bit for my end and asymptote behavior. So for my end behavior, that's going to be as x goes to positive infinity, my function goes to, so that's the right side of my graph. Where's my function going to? Getting closer and closer to 2. From above or from below? Below, right? So that's 2 negative. Left side of my graph, as x is approaching negative infinity, my function is getting closer and closer to 2 above or below? Above. So 2 positive. Asymptote behavior. As x is approaching 0 from the left, my function is doing something. Oh, this was all g's. Oh, my Atlanta, I put f's in here. It should be g's. No. I think, on, I think most of the time when it's a graph, I have them as, as f's. If not, I will change it. And as x goes to 0 from the right, what is my function doing? All right, so left side, as I'm getting closer and closer and closer to my blue line. Let me scroll up just a little bit so we can actually see the curve. Getting closer and closer and closer to my blue line, where is my function going? Up to the stars. That's positive infinity. Getting closer and closer and closer to my blue line from the right. Where is it going? Down to the basement. There is my end. There is my asymptote. Questions, comments, concerns, clarification. So let's talk rational function. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of a very basic rational function. We'll call it f of x equals 6 over 8. Do I like this rational function? Why not? Why don't I like this rational function? Well, it's a fraction. All rational functions are fractions. I don't know if you've keyed in on that yet. Okay. Well, there's that, but I, that that part I'm not too. That part I'm okay with. Say it louder. You can say. I can divide both the top and the bottom by two, right? So I can divide here by two. I can divide by 2, and then that would give me f of x here equals 3 fourths. Do I like that one? Yeah, I like that one a lot. Okay. It's just a horizontal line. What about if I'll go g of x now, just to mix it up a little bit. What if g of x was, let me think which one it was, x plus 6 over 
x plus 6, x plus 1. Do I like this rational function? Why not? Like, because there's an x plus 6 in the top and an x plus 6 in the bottom. So let's make it easier on ourselves and let's get rid of the x plus 6s. And then that's going to leave me with g of x is equal to what? 1 over x plus 1. Yeah. And I like that. It's a book, Peter. Less things to do. Well, that one. Do I like that one? Do I like 3x minus 10 over 25 better? Isn't that what it simplifies to? No. But can I just, there's an x squared on top, there's an x squared on the bottom. Don't those cancel each other out? Can't I just do this? Can't I just do that? No, oh, that's bad math. Very bad math. So what do I got to factor on the top? Or what does the top factor to be? Bottom? Okay. Now does anything factor out? Yeah, now the x plus 5s cancel each other out. And it leaves me with... Which is a much simpler, neater, easier one to do. So, with that being said, get out your supplemental note sheets or get them close, have them next, because we are going to add step zero. Step zero says that. If you can simplify, you should simplify first. So at the very top, yep, step zero. Before step one, we should simplify before we even start. So if you, you factor, you don't just Chop stuff off, and okay? we're not we're not whacking off functions here, and okay? we're not getting out the weed whacker and just whacking through and chopping off that x squared over x squared. Okay? So we factor the top, we factor the bottom. If there's a common term in those, we can cross those out, and that's going to give us a new function. Whoa! I don't know why that jumped on. And that new function, so important, it's worthy of four purple starbursts. Yeah. The new function, I'll call it the new factored function, is used 
on everything else. So we use that new function the rest of the way through. So when we're finding vertical asymptotes, when we're finding horizontal asymptotes, when we're finding y-intercepts, x-intercepts, the rest of the stuff, we use that brand new function. But there's one thing we don't use it on. We don't use it on the domain. Okay. So we use the original denominator for the domain. After that, we use our brand new function for everything else. Okay. That is step zero. Now, I'm going to add in a second step now. Because if we do something in step zero, then we have something to do in step number five. So if something happens in step zero, then you have to do step number five. And step number five says, find the whole. There's going to be a hole in your graph. If you factor something out in step zero, there's going to be a hole in the graph. And how we find that hole is we take whatever we crossed out top and bottom. We set that equal to zero and we solve it. Okay. So whatever we factored out on the, in step zero, we take however many those are, we take those, we set them equal to zero, and we solve. Then we plug that value back into our new function, because remember we're using our new function now for everything, and that's going to give us a y value, the value of the function at that point. Put those two together, and those are the coordinates of the whole. On the graph, it is literally a whole. It will be something that looks like this. You'll have a big hole, and then you'll have a function coming out either side of it. Okay. Do not fill in your hole. Your hole is what is called a point of discontinuity. Okay? It's where the other vertical asymptote should have been. Okay? But because we factored it, we took it out. We're getting rid of a vertical asymptote. Okay? So, let's do one. f of x equals x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. Step 0 now says I need to see if I can factor the top or factor the bottom. Can I factor the top? No. Can I factor the bottom? Yeah, what's the bottom factor to me? Just x? X plus 2 and x minus 2. Anything cancel out? The x minus 2's cancel out. Okay? So my new function then... is what? 
1 over x plus 2. Okay. So now we can go through and now we can do our rest of our steps. So now step 1 says I need to find the domain, correct? Okay. Well, for the domain, I have to go back to my original denominator, set it equal to 0. Luckily, I already factored it, so it's super easy to set equal to 0. They just set the factors equal to 0. So my domain of this new function is all real numbers, but x cannot be plus or minus 2. the domain, oh. which is what I did. Oh. Okay. Okay. Vertical asymptotes. What are the vertical asymptotes of my new function? No. Because I'm on my new function now. So I'm on this one. I'm on just on that for everything else. So it's just x equals negative 2. What is the horizontal asymptote of my new function? Degree at the top is 0. Degree of the bottom is 1. So that's small over big, so that's y equals 0. Y intercept of my new function. Zero comma one half. X intercept of my new function. None. Numerator is one. Can one equal zero? Nope. So there's no x intercept, so I don't cross the x axis. Now, here's where step five comes in. Step five says, way back up here, we factored out x minus two. So I'm going to take x minus two, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. And that's going to give me x equals two. So my whole is going to be at 2, comma, something. So now I put f, or I find f of 2. I put 2 into my new function. And I get that there's a hole at 2, comma, 1 fourth. So I go to that coordinate, and I literally put a hole in my graph. I put an open dot at that coordinate. Step six, don't have yet. Won't get that until Monday. Step seven says more points. You need more points. So let's go with negative 3. If I plug in negative 3, I get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. Negative 10, or negative 4, excuse me, would be 1 over negative 2. 
and negative 10 would be 1 over negative 8. If I wanted to put more points on the other side, I could. I would first go with negative 1, and that would be just 1 over 1, and then I would be there. That also gives me three points on this side, because the whole technically is a point that is on my graph. Now here's the kicker. Please I get to the hole, I get there, I pick up my writing utensil, I go to the other side of my hole, and I continue on down the path. Okay. Don't just draw through your hole. I will mark it wrong because the function doesn't exist there. You draw through it and you're saying, I know how to divide by zero. Okay. Doesn't exist. Point of discontinuity. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns? You got to get the point somehow. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Before the test, test or before the quiz this week? This week. This week. This is the last step. Tomorrow's big graphic. All right. Go for it. Try that one on your own. I'm gonna like just do the first step zero to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Yeah. Because if you do step zero wrong, then you're going to, you know, do the rest of them. Yeah. Um, right? Okay. So this is x plus 6 on the top, and this is x plus 6 and x minus 1 on the bottom. Right? Which means then that the x plus 6s cancel each other out. So my new function... would be 1 over x minus 1. Yes? yes? Okay. Domain goes back to original function. So that's going to be all real numbers, but x cannot equal negative 6 or positive 1. After that, we're done with the original function. Now we're on to the new function. Vertical asymptotes of the new function. X equals 1. Horizontal asymptote of the new function. Y intercept of the new function. X intercept of the new function. Did I factor something out of the original function? Yes. What did I factor out? So I set x plus 6 equal to 0, and that gives me x equals negative 6. So my whole is going to be at negative 6, comma, I plug negative 6 into my new function, and I get negative 1, 7. So negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, comma 1, 7 is there. Do I have enough information on the left zone to graph it? Yeah, yeah I do. So I come through along here, stop, pick up, come back down, restart, and on through there. 
right zone, I would pick two, three, and ten. If I plug in two, I get one over one. If I plug in three, I get one over two. If I plug in ten, I get one over nine. One, one half, ninth. Did it say so? No. Good. Yeah. Try that one. Uh, let's see, asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. Where are they? X equals 2 and X equals negative 2. Horizontal asymptote. Y equals two. Because that two sitting up there. Yep. That's asymptotes. Intercepts. Y intercept. Zero, comma. Nine halves. Plug in zero. Negative eighteen over negative four, which reduces to nine halves. X intercepts. Three comma zero. And negative three comma zero. Numerator equal to zero. Holes. None. So you can now do numbers three and four on the back side of the blue sheet which means that you can do all of the blue sheet. And I remind you that there is a quiz this week Friday.